Cool. All right. Welcome back again, everybody. We'll just get settled in here for the next presentation. All right. So next up, we have Julian Sherrill from Bissell Center's Outreach Housing Team. Uh, this is a great team. They uh, engage and house individuals who are experiencing homelessness all over the city. Uh, the team works in underserved and un unreached areas uh, connecting with these individuals. Um, they have formed some great partnerships uh, across the city with other organizations that help ensure they can serve uh, as many people in need as possible. So without any further ado, please welcome Julie and Cheryl from Bissell Center's Outreach Housing Team. All right, so uh, like he said, we're from the Outreach Housing Team. We work out of uh, the Bissell Center um, and uh, the premise of this team kind of came about um, basically um, out of the concept that not everybody qualified for housing first, not everybody wanted housing first, so there is a lot of wait lists and a lot of people that weren't getting served by that one program. So the idea of our program was that everybody could access housing services in one form or another. Um, and the event that made this happen was uh, Strathcona High School fundraiser. Um, so these are kind of our grassroots. We're kind of a grassroots team. And uh, this, uh, this school basically raised, um, raised $190,000 uh, via Bikeathon which um, basically created the opportunity for our team, uh, for our team to come about. Um, and basically, it, yeah, it allowed us to launch a new program um, capable of kind of filling those gaps. Um, yeah, so we're really obviously grateful to them and uh, we've uh, done really well. Um, our guiding principles, um, so who we are, uh, basically uh, we're determined, we're ending homelessness and we're determined and we believe that long standing uh, systematic challenges can be changed. Uh, we help everyone who is homeless and services are, uh, are delivered to fit the individual. So it's not the other way around. They, they don't have to fit into certain criteria to, to meet our criteria because we have none, basically, and everyone can come. Um, and we're creative, we're innovative, outside the box, big picture thinkers. So that's kind of our grassroots. Uh, we're people who don't take what's always been done for granted. Um, and we take a solution-focused approach and basically find ways around obstacles using all our resources. And often, um, our best resources are the community members themselves. They often know um, a lot of the resources, and that's where I've, I've found some of my most uh, useful resources. So we just, we look at the individual strengths and we try and make, we use those strengths to make a good fit in terms of housing. Um, and we're collaborative. This is huge um, for us. So we, we definitely try to forge strong relational uh, networks um, within our community. We all work together. We support each other. Um, often when we're housing people, it's not one person that houses a person. Um, our whole team's involved in that housing in one way or another. So one person takes them to a viewing. Another person, um, you know, will be there to sign the lease. Another person will set up the fine pick. So we really... Uh, you know, we try and serve as many people as possible, and the way we can do that is by working together as a team, and also working with other agencies. So we're uh, constantly encouraging other agencies to collaborate with us, um, so that we're not doing it on our own, that we're collaborating with everybody to get uh, the best result for our community members. Um, so basically our goals, to build community. Um, we wanna facilitate sustainable and affordable housing. So we're looking at housing that's a fit, um, for the person, you know, so for housing, housing first, we're still looking at low, low enough rents so that when that, that program ends, they're still going to be able to afford it. We're looking at kind of a long-term plan um, for those individuals and a big part of that's connecting the right people with the right landlords, right? So, you know, if you get a situation where the landlord um, has had a, a bunch of tough housings lately, you might want to just, you know, bring someone in there that's, uh, you know, maybe a little more gentle or you know, I mean, has his barriers, but um, might be a better fit for that landlord at that time. Um, can you think of any other examples of that might work? Like connecting the right people with the right landlords, kind of at the right time. Yeah, so knowing, yeah, uh, like you said, knowing um, what a landlord is gonna be able to handle, mm -hmm. um, kind of knowing their thresholds. Some landlords will just freak out at the smallest things, mm -hmm. and so knowing not to send someone who has a lot of things to that landlord, knowing what a landlord can deal with and what, Getting a sense pretty early on of, of what a tenant is going to be able to handle. Um, yeah, you, it's just like if you're trying to make make connections anywhere, you want good fit, and that's that's a big goal of ours too. And I think it's been a learning curve, like figuring out how to make those good fits. We're always trying to improve that. 
Absolutely, yeah, and certain workers on our team have certain relationships with certain landlords. We've developed pretty good relationships with the rooming house landlords, um, the good ones we like to think, you know, in the area, and uh, um, often, you know, sometimes those people, we're going to move them into a housing first. If they're, if they're going to struggle there or if we notice that they're struggling, we'll kind of look at the big picture and that's just kind of a, a safe place for them to be until they can get into something, you know, that's maybe a better fit. Um, so our starting points, uh, basically, you know, when we meet with people, we'll complete V1 spadats uh, if they're eligible for housing first. Um, you know, we'll book a, an appointment for a starting point assessment, um, especially if they're an intensive case management um, kind of case. So meaning maybe they don't uh, qualify for housing first, but they're going to need a higher level of support. Um, and, you know, basically accessing the workshops, those are our main our main starting points for participants. So, uh, you know, we have a couple workshops. We work out of the Neighbors Centre. We work at a community member's pharmacy. So we have, um, yeah, a bunch of locations where, where people can access us. I know we've also, you know, worked with street outreach on a few occasions. We, um, there's a, a couple that was out, was out there for 17 years and they got housed recently. And that was because of a collaboration um, with street outreach. Um, this is a pretty loaded slide, so I don't expect you guys to read this one, but uh, basically the purpose of this slide is uh, sort of uh, to explain that housing is a process, right? It's not something that can happen right away. Every once in a while, miracles happen and then word gets out, um, but, but it's, uh, it's a little bit harder than, uh, you know, than it looks. So basically when we meet with people, they're going to go one of two routes. We're going to try and get them through uh, housing first if there's space on other teams or if there's space on our team to do that, um, or we're gonna determine other housing options for that participant. Maybe they don't wanna wait for housing first. Maybe it's a bit more urgent. Um, maybe they don't qualify. Um, or yeah, maybe they just don't want that level of support. We had a, a girl recently just say, like she qualified, everything was in, she just doesn't want, um, doesn't want that kind of involvement. And we gotta um, respect that, right? And let her make uh, her own choices. And if it doesn't work out, we're there um, to pick her up on the other end at one of those outreach locations or if other workers um, you know connect with us um, steps to securing housing so the big one securing income right that's uh, you know we can't find housing for someone unless they have an income so that's a big part of uh, what we do I know Cheryl's often I get the text at 7 30 in the morning she's at a social assistance office um, with someone kind of trying to get that process started um, and damage deposit because the outreach housing team I mean $190,000 is pretty amazing um, when you consider that it comes from a bunch of high school students but in the bigger scheme of things that's not a lot of money um, so we're often looking for money um, so we've collaborated with churches we've uh, you know developed a repayment plan we're constantly talking to social assistance so securing that 350 from Alberta works it uh, never covers the entire damage deposit rare or rarely um, so it's finding the additional money um, and just figuring out if they qualify for that so those are kind of our first steps and then we'd uh, you know we do a housing search and uh, collaborate with landlords and then we set up viewings um, get a rent reported if that's what's needed often landlords need renters insurance so you know, we help set up that, we help set up utilities, um, you know, move an inspection furniture. So it's a big process, right? It doesn't happen um, in a couple days. Like I said, every once in a while, it just, the, you know, the, yeah, yeah, but not very often, right? So I think with that as well, just re when we're working with participants, reminding them that it is a bunch of steps. It's not just, mm -hmm. it's not one big thing that you can never do. It's a bunch of little things. And if you do them all consistently, you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. like it, it doesn't need to be an insurmountable goal. It can be a bunch of little things that anyone can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, do you want to speak to this a bit? Um, basically, we provide, um, with the outreach housing team, we'll provide up to three months of follow-up support. When we're looking at those housing first guys, we're often looking to transfer them um, to other teams for follow-up support because obviously that's a, a longer amount of time and a more intensive support but um, yeah. yeah so for housing first guys we we used to keep them on our caseload for up to three months but that's quite intensive for a small team so now we've got relationships with several follow-up support teams and we just swing people right in wherever there's gaps um, and that's working really well but for our outreach guys who for whatever reason aren't going through housing first we try to give them some support now when you got two seven, 270 people being housed in a year and one follow-up support worker for three months that's uh, 75 people on my caseload at any given time. So I'm not going to everyone's house every week and making sure they're okay. Mostly I am sort of an on-call supply of a follow-up for people. So a lot of it is just letting them know what the resources are. 
Um, if they have tried and are struggling or failing at accessing those resources, then holding their hand a little more to make sure they get there or contacting that agency to make sure the agency connects with them. Um, and then sort of targeting a few people who we know are going to need those higher intensity supports and either connecting them directly to supports that are available or advocating for those resources to exist if they don't. Um, so it's a whole mix of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so ideally, we're going to, you know, do referrals, ID services, mental health supports, but like I said, we're collaborative. So we like to work with other agencies to kind of tackle some of those things. Um, it always works best when we're collaborating, right? Um, yeah. We can't do it on our own. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of landlord um, relations stuff, right? So just kind of... Uh, smoothing things over um, sometimes and uh, yeah just maintaining those relationships with landlords and kind of mediating those situations because if someone hasn't been housed in a long time um, you know there's I always find there's some bumps at the beginning there tends to be mm. some bumps at the beginning so if we can kind of smooth that over and uh, and the big thing is communication landlords just want you to talk to them right so if you're communicating with them um, you know and kind of facilitating that process it uh, you know I feel like we've there's not a lot of landlords that we don't have good relationships with. I feel like we've, uh, you know, we've done pretty well in mediating that and supporting mm -hmm. um, landlords as well as the participant in those situations. Um, yeah, so how can you help speed up the housing process? Um, we talked about some of that stuff already, but um, the workshops, they're getting really busy. Um, they're a really good starting point for a lot of these guys. Um, but there's only two workers at those workshops, right? So when we get 25 people coming in, we'll, we'll, these guys can run, right? Like, and bustle around for sure and really get some things started for them. But um, if you um, are going to refer someone to a workshop, if you can, right? Obviously, everybody has uh, their own um, capacity or, or, you know, some people are outreach workers, some people aren't. But um, if you can, like, come to the outreach locations just for two reasons, right? One, to land the person because they tend to land a little better. If, if they come and they feel comfortable um, with their worker. And the other reason is just like for um, that extra hand, right? So if you're gonna bring or refer people to workshops, um, come along with them. That's one way you can definitely speed up the process and we'd welcome any one of you to come down to those workshops and check them out for sure. Um, you know, assist community members to secure funding. So just talk to them about the housing process, right? Um, talk to them, like call your social assistance worker, see if you qualify for that $350. Um, you know, do you have family members that can help out? Um, you know, often the doctor's letter for the additional core shelter funding, um, if they can have that when they show up, that's going to speed up the process hugely because then we can, instead of looking at a rooming house, we can maybe look at a one, a, like one bedroom or a bachelor suite. So little things like that. Um, even showing up, this is when I always encourage to like show up with landlord contacts, you know, and rental listings. So if you don't feel like comfortable enough talking to the landlord or don't exactly know how to do that, we can definitely help with that. You show up with contacts, that's going to save a ton of time. Um, so those are definitely some ways you guys can uh, help out. Um, so outreach locations and times. So Bissell Center West Monday workshops, they're from 9 to 11. Um, so uh, basically you sign up at the bubble and uh and yeah uh they've been pretty busy right um on those monday mornings um but yeah that's one one way you can get in stanley milner library tuesdays from one to three um so that one tends to be the more family friendly one um if if you know a mom's coming with some kids um and then the neighbor center on wednesdays from two to four um so that's where we're seeing a lot of those guys camping right mm -hmm. so we're also collaborating with homeward trust um, to try and connect with a lot of those guys because they're, yeah, often those guys are sleeping in the River Valley. So I know we've, I've gone out into the River Valley. Um, I had an idea, you know, <laughs> so you're just kind of calling out into the, um, you know, into the bushes down there to find someone. And, uh, and it worked out that day. It was a really good day, right? Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, we're also, um, you know, trying to connect uh, with a lot of those individuals um, as well. And we also have, there's Community Members Pharmacy. It's a little bit more limited. It tends to um, be for the guys accessing the community members pharmacy because we're only there for an hour so that usually means you can see like one person but we also have a location there um, yeah so does anybody have any questions Um, well, the workshop tends to be busier and it's more sort of a directed to resources concept. So it's more like client led, which is why I'm encouraging workers to come if somebody maybe has um, 
some higher needs are going to need some more intensive support, mm -hmm. um, just so they don't get as frustrated in that first workshop when they come in and, and you know, they're, you're showing them Kijiji and showing them how to look up things on their own. Um, the drop-in service at the neighbor center, it tends to be less busy, so it's not kind of that workshop format. Um, so it is kind of, you just drop in, that worker can really, like, kind of sit down and talk to you about it. So it's more one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when you're, like, looking for new landlords, what does that process look like? And then what is, I guess, some of the, I don't know, like, what's the difference between the ones that you know you can work with and ones that you just can't work with? Like, what does that look like? Um... A landlord you can't work with is somebody who's not going to respect your, mm -hmm. the tenant at the end of the day. So we've got one landlord that we work with who um, was like harassing the tenant, monitoring with video surveillance, camping out in an empty suite, trying to, um, saying that he couldn't have his friends over because they were homeless. Um, just basic judgments towards people. So if you've got a landlord that's got a lot of judgment and is going to be really controlling, it's likely not going to work out well. Um, but where we find our landlords, a lot of them are just through the process. Whenever you're going out doing viewings, you're getting a feel for what landlords are like and how much they're interested in working with you. So if a landlord is meeting with you for one viewing and they say, oh yeah, you know, we got a couple other places we'd be interested in showing them, you got a pretty good chance of developing something there. Yeah, and I find the relationships develop over time, right? Like, so a lot of that follow-up piece, like if we're doing a pretty good job in that follow-up with those first couple bumps, um, we're going to develop a pretty good relationship with that landlord. Um, that's how, you know, I've always done it, is just make sure, you know, I'm there to kind of support um, the landlord. And others, like, I mean, housing first, too. I mean, it's a pretty good deal for landlords. And I always kind of sell it like that, right? I mean, you're getting, you know, rents coming to you third party. If there's damages, we're going to help. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with the outreach housing guys, there's not as much guarantee. Um, so, yep. you know, that follow-up, that constant communication um, seems to work. But, yeah, you get, the, you know, some landlords that are a bit hovery, and that's not going to work for someone who you, you know is very private or, you know, um, other people are okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is kind of um, finding the right fit. If it's coming from a genuine place from the landlord where, you know, he's like, and I just try and be like, well, just call me and I'll talk through it, you know, with the landlord, but maybe just, yeah. you know, leave him alone, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, you know, just, yeah, come to me or, or you know, but, um, yeah, good mediation, good mediation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, I haven't found, I haven't found a lot of landlords that I don't, um, you know, there's some that, you know, maybe a little bit, um, are like asking for money, asking for too much, um, you know, m like money back, like they, maybe there's a scratch on the floor and they want like the whole floor replaced or things like that. But I mean, we have backups for that. That's why we take pictures, you know, and um, mm -hmm. I honestly, for the most part, have never really had a lot of problems with landlords. I've always, um, you know, worked quite well. And then, you know, word of mouth, you just don't go to that guy if you, you know, and mm -hmm. it's usually from participants, you know, you get that word of mouth from participants and you just kind of uh, avoid those landlords um, for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, another question about the locations and times. <laughs> so if someone would be looking more for one-on-one -on -one support and say they're not in the area of the neighborhood center, like can they just drop into the Bissell Center at a different time? Um, or does it have to be from kind of 9 to 11 for the workshop? I would, I would encourage them like 9 to 11 for the workshop because we can also flag in those workshops a little bit. Maybe someone who needs a bit more support. It's, it's more about... Um, like workers having like the ability to give that kind of support, right? But if, mm -hmm. if they show up for those workshops, um, it's going to happen um, for them definitely eventually. Or you know, um, you know, just uh, like you know, calling in or going through Starting Point um, downstairs with Adult Support, they can make a referral through Starting Point at Adult Support too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, All we're right. good. All right. Thank <laughs> well, thanks, Julie and Cheryl. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, like I said before, if you have any more questions for uh, the outreach housing team or anything to do with Bissell, Bissell does have a table set up. I believe they're actually right next to Boyle Street. So 
nice reference point. Um, and also, you probably noticed there's some cameras at the back of the room. These presentations are going to be available on EPL's website, probably at some point later this week or next week, so you can uh, review them later on. Um, so we are going to have a bit, of a bit of a break now. Our next presentation is going to be at noon, so we have a little bit of a break for lunch. Uh, next presentations are going to be about employment and education. So at noon, we're going to have Bissell Centre's Employment Services Program, and then at 12:15, uh, we have the Water Wings Program from Boyle Street Community Services. So please make sure you come back for that. Bring some friends. We have seats available, and uh, we have some schedules throughout the uh, City Hall area here as well. So thanks, everyone. <laughs>